I'm by no means a metal fabricator, but uh, this thin aluminum plate, which is only, let's see, 8 or 0.8 millimeter thick, should be pretty easy to bend. Uh, I'm going to create the, uh, the background or the, um, the base for my fuse box or my fuse panel. Alright, so slowly but surely I'm fitting this piece. Well, here's what I got it looking like now. I bent this one on an angle so it would fit right underneath this lip here. Uh, but I gotta, I gotta notch out these two sides. So I'll notch that out and then it'll slide under there. I'll have to notch out for this uh, bolt right here. But I'll, I'll measure that after I notch out these sides and figure out what I need to cut to get it around this bolt. Okay, right, so here's what the final mock-up looks like. Basically, I uh, bent the bottom straight, squared off 90 degrees, just an inch. This is an inch right here. I bent the sides. These are, this is a half inch here on the sides. And then this top... I angled to cover the the angle of the um, the angle of the roof or the hood line. So as the as the hood comes down, I I marked here. I made a mark here, and then I bent it along that line. Now when you're bending this stuff, it helps to have a nice straight hard edge. So I got this piece of granite here from an old countertop that I used to to hold the piece flat, and then and then bend along whatever angle I wanted to bend. And it, this aluminum bends real easily. On the sides here, these two half inch bends, I did score the um, the material with my Dremel. So I made a I made a score here, not being careful not to go all the way through. And then I bent it over along that score line and that made it easier to bend these um, these half inch sides. All right, so I'm just marking the position here of where I want to drill the hole. And this aluminum is, is pretty easy to get through, so. And then once, once, that, once that pilot hole's in, these self-tapping sheet metal screws go in real easy. And then you don't need to crank them down tight. We're just kind of hold, trying to hold it in place. There you go. It's mounted. All right, now I'm just drilling the holes for the grommets. So I just I just measured them here, centered them out. I might want them to sit right there. The wires will come out and go to each one of the individual terminals. I'm trying to make it as neat as possible as compact as possible. I don't want a lot of extra wire lying around. Alright, so now I'll just clean up those holes. Shall take this off. So just um, squeezing these grommets into the hole so it's it's fairly easy if you get the right size ratio. Um, so just push it in and then it'll, it'll pop through the other side. And just make sure it, it's um, fitting on both sides and it's not... There we go. There we go. So that's how it looks so far. Now I'll just I'll mount this one right above so that'll be mounted in just like that. Okay I've gone through and tinned all of the wire wire tips uh, meaning I just uh, put some solder on there to 
uh, make them a solid uh, piece of wire instead of uh, a braided wire. Um, so now I can I can push them into the fuse box and uh, have those screws tightened down nicely and, and not worry about a bad connection. What I've done here is I've taken the only copper I had, which is right here, it's a piece of tubing from um, an old brake line and it's copper and it conducts very well. I've checked the resistance on it and everything looks good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the metal and flatten it out so that I can create this bus bar and then I can connect this whole bus to, uh, to itself and distribute the 12 volt input. All right, working the metal is just a simple process. Just take my mallet here and, and this hard steel surface that I'll uh, work it on. And I'm just trying to flatten out, so I'm gonna hit and push away, push away, push away. And I'm just gonna try to flatten the metal out as much as possible. I don't, I don't need to flatten it out too much. Um, just enough to make um, enough surface for the screw to go into to uh, tighten it down. So I'm gonna flatten out a good um, a good section here. I think uh, need about four or five inches, and then I'll cut it off and I'll I'll drill the holes in it. The bus bar that I made out of copper right here and just lay that in and mark the holes so you got to be pretty precise on this to make sure you get the holes right where you want them so measure twice cut once measure three times cut once all right when you're making holes in the metal uh, make sure you one clamp down the piece of metal this thin copper has a chance to, has a has a tendency to walk up the um, the drill bit and then it'll snap off like this piece did so if you don't want that to happen clamp it down and I wish I had a drill press but I have to do this by hand so also use a, the slow speed on your drill and it'll it'll go in. This is nice and soft copper, so Okay, now I got all the holes drilled in my uh, bus bar and If you did it right all the screws will go in If you didn't you get a tiny little Dremel uh, Metal grinding bit and you can you can enlarge in the hole a little bit to make it uh, fit, but uh, I got lucky, or maybe it's skill, and all of them fit perfectly, so now I have this tied in completely and I can just use one 12-volt, uh, or one input, to distribute the ignition 12-volt uh, source to all of my, uh, all of my accessories. Another thing I'm going to do is install a more heavy duty, constant duty um, relay to do the switching or the to power this fuse block here. So I'm going to install this heavy duty unit and it's going to go right here along the side. Over here I'm going to install another panel just like this one. I'm make, fabricating it right now out of this aluminum so it'll look consistent and it'll look the same so it's going to go right here and it's going to have the main breaker so this is going to be a main breaker that's going to kill power to the whole um, board if uh, for some reason something shorts out on the main line all right so this is the final product 
what it looks like. So it fits nicely right around the wire loom here. That's what this cutout is for right here. And then it's slightly bent backwards to make room for the coil, which sits right down here. The fuse panel is all fabricated and uh, complete now. Um, I have this master fuse here uh, that takes the input power. I've run a line directly off of where the uh, I got a zero gauge cable coming directly from the dual batteries in the back up to the starter motor here and then uh, I've got a heavy gauge cable coming up to this this um, master fuse right here. The master fuse is then distributed um, into my fuse box in the fuse panel. So it goes in to the constant 12 volt panel which has all the constant 12 volt um, accessories on on this bus here. And then that goes into a ignition switched relay here. This um, heavy duty relay um, that has constant duty uh, for the uh, bus on top here and this bus is all the ignition uh, equipment and so those are all fused now individually and then I just have a this negative bus here that has um, some negative terminals on it to uh, supply all the grounding for uh, the individual units so it's all set I replaced all the bullet connectors as shown in a previous video and it's all set and I think it looks pretty tidy and it's more, uh, well, it's really engineered the way it probably should be, having uh, each component on an individual fuse rather than having the car power fed by two fuses for every single piece of equipment. It's probably not the best way to go. So this is my solution to that. And um, I hope uh, you enjoyed and uh, if, if you have any questions, obviously uh, leave them in the comment section below and uh, see you in the next video.